there in Channel 9 land, it's Talking Baseball Time. I'm Pete Lincoln. I'm Jason Smith. Welcome to Season 3, Episode 7. We're almost done with the year, folks, believe it or not. This year's flown by, too, for some reason. I don't know why. Uh, the good weather. That's true. Yes. You know, it's, it, it's, uh, last year was dry. All the grass is crispy. Yeah. This year I'm mowing lawn still, and the er season's over. Early October, and it's uh, 85 degrees out, so uh, no complaints here. So this episode, we thought we would do a little rundown of the team. The season just ended, so we thought we'd follow in the footsteps of Tony Maserati and give a report card to the team. Uh, sort of give each player a grade, and we have not conferred ahead of time, so this is completely, yet again, improvised. So, uh, Channel 9, you're getting the best of our quick thinking here. Okay. <laughs> now, it's, it's strange. This year, the Red Sox were 93 and 69. Last year, they were 93 yeah. and 69. Last year, somehow to me, seemed like a very satisfying year. Enjoyed the, enjoyed the club all the way through. Things were exciting. This year, they had the same record. And it seems how it seemed disappointing. It was a very flat year for some reason. And I um, think it's because there's actually an advanced stat called the Pythagorean record, which is they run the team through the stats. Their Pythagorean record was supposed to be 96 wins. So according to stats, they've actually underachieved by three wins, which is kind of interesting. Well, I have my own yeah. theory. It's not a Pythagorean or anything to do with <laughs> geometry or <laughs> Euclid or anything. Right. Yeah. It's the missing David Ortiz theory. Ah, uh, yes, that's a very strong theory. Uh, even when they didn't win, to watch him play every day yes. was a treat. It was. And the yeah. fact that he went out was such a terrific season. I mean, who else hit 38 home runs in his last season? Mm. Nobody. Anybody. <laughs> Nobody. And what else he did was to make the players around him better. <laughs> That's something that's been missing this season is they haven't had the clubhouse leader. Uh, it sure as heck isn't Farrell, that's for sure. And they haven't had one guy who's really taken the reins. Pedroia said it was him, but he's injured so often, it's really hard to rely on somebody like that to be a clubhouse leader. And I think that, more than anything, is really, really what they've missed this year, is also, his presence. Also, the fact that there's someone that's feared in the lineup makes the batters ahead of them get better pitchers. And the ones behind them get more opportunities than not people there. Because people on base. And I, not that I'm a great fan, but that's what Aaron Judge has done for the Yankees this year. Right. Yeah, he, he that's certainly the, has. Mm -hmm. They're very afraid of him. They walk him all the time. And it makes the RBIs of the guys behind him. So I think that's that was the essential difference. Yep. They haven't had a cleanup hitter all year. And, and they that's what That was not their focus because last year they were hurting in the pitching department. So they stored that, shored that up. And now uh, <laughs> so, hitting, pitching, hitching, yeah. <laughs> so and, you have to find the balance. And, and historically, the Red Sox have not been big on pitching. No, which has always been tops of the league in hitting. Which is kind of what made this year surprising is that the pitching was so good versus last, the hitting. Last year, the team average was 286. This year, it was 264. And they were last in home Last in home runs. But they were the top 10 in steals, which is really rare for a Red Sox team. <laughs> so go figure that one out. But, well, I think they had to figure out some way to compensate because you, you can't just single everyone in. There was no power at all on the team. You have to compensate somehow, and I think they did that with some really aggressive base running, too, which I think, for better or worse, evened out for the better, I think, but there were some all, also some really ugly outs on the base pass during the year. Especially, well, if you're uh, going to be aggressive, especially with young players, right, yeah. young players, uh, you, yep. you can't have it both ways. You can't say don't run the way they right. always used to. Right. You're never going to steal a head of Ortiz because he might knock you in whatever, whatever base you're on. Right. But now you're going to have to get four singles to knock somebody in. Right. Yeah. You're going to have to take those base running chances. Yep. And, it, so, and it was all the way through the lineup, too. It wasn't just the top guys, the middle. Yep. Everyone, even the middle of the order sometimes, were out stealing bases. Vasquez stole a few. That's right. That's right. So, but you had to because they just weren't, they simply weren't knocking the people in. So you have to figure out a way to get the runs in somehow without the power, which, oddly enough, in this quote, era of the pitcher, which it was till this year, offense took charge this year. <laughs> this year was a huge offensive year in baseball. So, uh, I don't know, the Red Sox are sort of the anomaly is that they had the hitting last year but not the pitching, and this year they kind of swapped it out. That's right. So. Well, so here's the way we'll start. We're going to go um, position by position. I'll read the basic statistics each player had, and we'll chat a minute about it, and then come up with uh, a, a grade. Give them a little letter grade. Sure. Some of you out there know that I spent several decades teaching school and gave grades to people. Now I get a chance to give them grade the players. To my ball players. Oh, let's do the trivia first, by the way, before we started on the grades. Okay. Yes. Okay. So we almost forgot. So this is a uh, sort of one you're not going to come up with off the top of your head, but if you sort of count it out, you can probably figure it out. So the Red Sox came into existence in 1901. 
How many times, counting this season, because they were already in the playoffs in 2017, how many times have they made the postseason? Now forget, we are counting wild cards too, because before the advent of the wild card, you had to win the division. But as we all know, they actually won the World Series as a wild card one year, so big in. And for before that. that, you had to just get into the World Series. Right, it was the, just the World Series. How many times they won? Right, all of that. Just the postseason. That's right. And they and we'll give you a hint. Thank God they've never had to deal with the one game wild card. So <laughs> that's that, right. They, don't, don't put that out of your mind. They haven't done, had to deal with that yet. Uh, twice they had to deal with the one game playoff at the end of the season, and they lost both of those. Of course, those but, don't count. The, the, those were not playoff games. Those, those are regular those season, season games. games. Yes, that's what we had. 78 and uh, 48. 48. Yes, Cleveland. The Denny Gale House game. Right. Yes. So. Lou Boudreau. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, let's not reminisce. Not, nobody out there remembers no, that. No, no. We'll just pretend we're younger. <laughs> well, <laughs> pretend. <laughs> so, okay, we'll start with back the catching business. Get back to the catching position. Uh, as they did last year, the Red Sox were able to use a two-platoon catching system, which is great. Yes. Uh, for years and years and years and years, they would have a starting catcher and some lug. Some kind of scrub. Yeah. And that's still the way most teams operate. No catcher is going to catch 130, 140 games. But they were able to pretty well split both last year and this year. Yep. In fact, this was the first year that they've ever had two catchers start 70 games apiece. That's right. First time it's ever it's happened. happened. So, you know, well, back in the day, you had Rich Gedman catch 140 and Mark <laughs> Sullivan caught 20, and that right. was it. Those days are gone. Nobody right. does that they anymore. Don't do that anymore. So, we'll start with Christian Vasquez. Uh, Christian this year uh, hit 290, he batted 324 times. Had uh, five home runs and 32 RBIs and stole seven bases. Uh, how would you rank him? I uh, I'm very high on Vasquez. I gave him a B plus. I'm very high on him. Uh, I think. I agree. All right, very good. Number one. <laughs> yes. What do you agree on? Right on. Uh, I I really think that if you're going to look to a kind of a future team leader, he might be that guy. Right. Uh, I think the catcher position is a great position for leadership. You're always looking to him to sort of uh, run the field. The catcher is the captain of the team essentially. The catcher runs the field, and the ki the pitchers really seem to love working with him. He has a great arm. His arm seems to be back after the Tommy John surgery he had. Right. right. And he's hitting for average, and I'm not worried about the power as we've said before catchers tend to blossom a little later with their power you know they really tend to peak at about 30 to 32 with their power numbers not worried about the lack of power at all he's still a good singles and doubles hitter he has some speed as we saw with the steals uh, I, I'm very high on him I, I think strong B plus he had 227 last year, so his average jumped almost 65 points. And he seems confident batting now, hitting lefties and righties. Yeah. That's what I like. Yeah, it, yep. And uh, I, you can just see it. He was still a little tentative getting over his injury last year, I yeah. think. He never really went loose with the throws. He was kind of scared to hit. This year, and he got better as the year went on, too. Right. And I think that that's really big. He, he came in as the number two catcher, and he definitely became the number one Absolutely. catcher. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, and the other catcher, Sandy Leone. Uh, Sandy only had 225 uh, this last year, which is an 85-point drop. <laughs> he had last year, for the first half of the season, he said like 360. Yeah, it, it was a fluke. <laughs> it was a fluke, but I mean, still, it was, it, was, uh, it was great at the time. He actually did knock in more runs than Vasquez did this year. Which is really, yeah, which is surprising. But the uh, second half of the season seemed he really tailed off. And I think uh, I ended up giving him a, uh, giving him a C. Um, and I think... It's really difficult because I don't think you can go to last year and expect that out of him. Last year was an outlier. That was a real career year. Yeah. I think you have to look at him more of a defensive guy. He's Chris Sale's caddy. Yeah. And you have to kind of live with that. And I think as long as Sale's putting up the numbers, then I'm fine with having Leon in the lineup. Uh, even though he only hit about 230, he still is great at, at working the count. It seems like he has a full count every time he's up. Um, he does have an occasional pop when he runs into a fastball. He'll hit one out. And I think he was playing hurt in the second half. I don't think they've really let on about that. I think he's a little bit banged up, but I think that affected him because he started okay. Yeah, the he, second half, he really, he really took a dive. He also has pop in his pants, so he's yeah. small. <laughs> oh, he is. Oh, he's really uh, slow. He's unbelievable. He's a log jam, but he and Moral in the behind each other. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which, is, which on this team is unusual. Cause right, because the, the, the other guys could steal. Well. Yeah. I, I gave him a C plus only because because uh, he tailed off so badly at the end. And personally, I don't like the idea of the caddy. Yeah. The guy that always has to catch for some guy because the one game he couldn't 
that's going to throw people right. out. I don't think they should work well, that way. We, we, we dealt with that with Wakefield and Mirabelli right. for the better part right. of a decade with this and team. The, the whole so. state police to operate. Yeah, right. Yeah, no. So, so uh, and, and maybe that might change. I, I don't know if the, if in the future they're going to go to sale and say, hey, you have to work with Vasquez and Leon, or if that's going to continue. I have no idea. Uh, so we'll, we'll see what that goes. I would say goes. the aesthetic catches. I think they are too. Uh, I think it's a they're good. Both still young guys. Yeah, I think it's a good one-two tandem. Like we've said, uh, catchers tend to peak in their early to mid thirties. Actually, yeah, Swyard has been pretty well moved out of the picture. I wouldn't be surprised if they traded him. I think he's good trade bait because I think he's he's versatile. That he's shown that they they he can play anywhere in the field. I totally think he's trade bait. I agree with that. I think they're fine at catcher. Moving over to first base, Mitch Moreland was a new acquisition. Came in this year from Texas. Uh, last year he hit twenty home runs and hit two thirty. This year he got 22 home runs, did 246, but I still gave him a C plus. Yeah, I I, uh, I gave him a B minus. I was a little bit higher only because that old adage, you get what you pay for, and that's Moreland it, it, through his entire career. He's a 230, 240 hitter, 20 homer guy, uh, no speed whatsoever. But the, the, I was <laughs> disappointed a bit in his defense. He was a Gold Glove guy, and it. It seemed like he wasn't quite up to standards on his glove. That's why I knocked him back a little bit. Just by the naked eye, he seemed a little heavier. Yes. Like yes. A little heavier than he yes. was. Than he was and he before. wasn't scooping like he was the, in, in previous years. I remember in Texas when he was had Elvis Andrews and all those guys who weren't the greatest fielders in the world. He would scoop everything over there, and that yeah. didn't happen a lot this year, especially with Bogarts. He really, really uh, messed up a couple of his throws. He did knock in 79 runs, but uh, I think that was... Because of his early season start. I think so. He was leading the world in doubles to start out. In fact, Two Base was the nickname he yeah, had. Yeah, Mitchie Two Bags. Yeah. 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 And, and he's very hot and cold. He's very inconsistent. He, you know, he'll have a week where he crushes three homers, and then he's an automatic out for the next two weeks. Well, give him credit for this, though. He's never hurt. Never. No, nope. he was steady. He had three so. or four guys in this team that played it all through the season. They did get to the point, though, where it's sitting him down against lefties. They were. Yeah, he was a platoon by the That's end of the year. A cleanup hitter shouldn't be a platoon player. Right. Well, they were forced into him any cleanup because they didn't have anyone to cover Poppy. And but. Which leads us into the other part-time first baseman. Last year's first baseman, Hanley yeah. Ramirez. Last year, Hanley had 286 with 30 home runs, knocked in 111 runs. This year, he had 242 with 23 home runs and 62 RBIs, down 50 from last yeah. year. I partly due to Poppy's absence. Partly, but still. Partly, uh, but I gave I gave Ramirez a C. I um, did too. Verging on a C minus. Um, he left two hundred and twenty runners on base this year. That's astounding. That is a ton of people to leave on base, especially you know, if if it was like the two thousand three team where you know everybody in the lineup was always on base and everything. You right. could understand that maybe this was not a good offensive team, no. and they really needed him to pick it up and right. and. Maybe you know. Last year was a great year, and I'm not. I wasn't expecting last year, but better than this year. You know, it's sort of a middle ground between the two would have been nice because they never. He they were relying on him to be that number four or five hitter in you know, a presence in the lineup, and he never was. Off the top of your head, how many real good clutch hits? Walk off hits that he had. I can think of one. One. That was it. One. Yeah. He won the 19 inning game. Yeah. That was that's the that's the big sure. memorable one of, of the season. And even that was a little flare single. That wasn't. He like also he seemed the ball. to me to be playing like he did two years ago. Kind of lack of days. Yeah, he didn't seem like he was really into it. No. He seemed like uh, you know last year he seemed like he was part of the team and he yeah. was joking with everyone the whole. Right. He seemed like he was very removed from the team this year. It didn't seem like he was really and into he it. Looked a little heavier again. Too. He did. So uh, yeah, that's a definite mid to low C with. Him. He was a big disappointment. Now, they, I'm sure Hanley is still on the books, but I think they still regard him primarily as their DH. Uh, Moreland is a one year contract. Uh, I'm not sure they'll bring him back. And this is the one spot when they go to free agency. This is a big I would thing. really love to see him pick up the Kansas City first base. Oh, uh, Moustakas? No, no. The oh, first oh, oh, Hosmer. Hosmer. Hosmer, yes. Hosmer yeah. would be great. And he's a free agent. He, I think Kansas City is probably going to break up somebody. Oh, they are. Oh, this, this, this Hosmer's yes. going to come in. Yep. Big, big bucks. Yes. This was Kansas City's last year. They sort of had that window with the core of that team, and they were going to give it one more run, and it didn't work out. And Hosmer, Moustakas, uh, 
the fast outfielder, I forget his name, all of them are free agents on right. the Royals. Right. They're really going to be tearing it down. So Hosmer would definitely be a good pickup. And I and I don't think it would phase him playing in Boston either. I know he wants to go back to Kansas City, but they all say that, so they yeah. get a better offer from the home. I just, but I think with the Royals tearing the team down, I don't think they take And the Royals back. can't sign Mustakas and Hosmer. Right, they have to, they they have have to pick, pick either and or. They're more likely to pick the third baseman because that's out of position to fill. So. Uh, that would be a definite uh, uh, upgrade. Okay, so moving over to second base, the 12-year veteran Dustin Pedroia. Uh, Dustin, unfortunately, more and more he's going to be injury prone. Uh, he plays so out, balls to the wind. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, no other so, way to put it. So that he uh, is going to hurt himself sometimes. Yeah. He hurts his knees, he hurts his elbows. Well, and when, you're, and when you're a young man in your early to mid-20s, you can do that. He's 33, 33 now. He'll be 34 next and year. And you can't do that anymore. No. You can't he's, do that when you're that He's still age. a phenomenal fielder. Oh, he's a terrific he's fielder. fielder. How quick he is. And, and, and he's very smart in the field, too. What he's... He may have lost a step in the field, but he's very good at compensating. He knows the hitter so well, as it'll go a step or two either way, depending on who's up, and, and, and he'll, he's in the right place all but, the time. But just check these stats. Last year, he batted 633 times. This year, 406. Mm -hmm. That's only two-thirds of what he hit last year. Last year, he hit 218. This year, 293. That's okay. Yep. But he had 15 homers last year. This year, seven. Yep. Uh, he knocked in 62 this year. Last year, 74. Mm -hmm. uh, he still stole... He still had a solid year. I gave him a B minus only because he couldn't play the whole. I also actually gave him a B minus too uh, because he was hurt, and and compounding that is when he's hurt, there is a gaping hole in that lineup. That's right. They didn't. They don't have any, until they got Nunez. That's, that's the yeah, man. Before before Nunez, especially, they had nobody who could fill in at the top of that lineup and just be a general pain in the butt hitter that, that, that Pedroia is. You know, even uh, e even when he's not going well, he still, again, has a full count every at bat. He yeah. fouls off a ton of pitches. And uh, so he can go one for 20, but he'll still help you in the field. He'll still give you a tough at bat. And they did, They just don't have anybody behind him. But he's going to be on the field from help you on the field. That's the that's problem. That's the big problem. That's the and problem. It seems that's happening more and more. And especially, in, like you said, he turns 34 this year. And I think they have him signed for another three years. Is yes. It? So they have to deal with that going forward, is that he's going to be on the field less and less. And you mentioned Nunez. That was a great pickup. It was. And... Uh, until he got hurt at the end of the season, he was, I would say, the most valuable player on the team. Oh, absolutely. He was, yep, absolutely. He, he had 321, uh, knocked in 27 runs with eight, and he also stole six bases. But uh, at the end of the year, when his knee just gave away, his hoping that's yeah. not going to be so severe that he can come back full strength next year. Yeah, well, I, I gave him an A minus, actually. I thought he was uh, a huge spark plug. He was a great pickup. Yeah. He was a tough out. Uh, he played solid at second and third, no matter where they asked him to play. He DH'd a few times, yeah. too. Uh, he added some speed, which they already had, but he's uh, he's probably the fastest guy on the team. Right. Uh, it, he was like third in the NL in steals when they traded for him, actually. He well, I gave him a B only because it's a small sample size. It is a small yeah, sample yeah, size, so but, but I, I, to me, I, th I think coming off the half year he had with the Giants and the year before he had with the Twins, I think he's trending. He's, he's trending upward. I think if anything, so uh, I think if they can, I don't know what his contract situation is. Do they have him for next year? Oh, no, he's, he's free agent. He's a free agent. Yeah. So that we'll, that, we'll talk at the end yeah. of the free agent situation. So, uh, but I, I think he was a terrific pickup. That's so exactly. So moving the shortstop, we've got those and the Bogarts. <laughs> Uh, yeah. And it's interesting that other teams, other announcers seem to value him maybe even more than we do. I think so too. And the funny thing is, is I think because I, there are some holes in his game, don't get me wrong, but in relation to other shortstops in the league, he's still in the top tier of shortstops, right. which is really crazy when you think about it, because compared to last year or even two years ago, it seems like he had a really off year. Uh, especially power-wise. He lost all his power this year. And again, well, is he hurt? There's rumblings that he had an injury, so who knows? You know, well, last year, he, he, 652 at bats, 192 hits, 21 homers, 24, uh, 34 doubles, 89 knocked in, 294. This year, he 273. Powers, power was off all the way around. But he did steal 15 bases in, and only was caught once. In 16 tries, yeah. Right. So, so the speed is still there, which makes me hope that it's some kind of injury that he was actually dealing with. There were rumors about that. He also seems to wear down. Both years he was hitting well over 300. And then September and then he just hits August a wall. August September he yeah. seems to go down. But and, the, and what also worries me is that 
I'm not sure how good of a warner he is. They still get him out down and away. Oh, once a game, he'll strike out on some horrid down and away pitch because he thinks he can go after it, and he still has not has not fixed that aspect of and his game. And the he's around too. Yes. Yeah. yeah. If, if, they they, they just bury him down and away, and yeah. he's really vulnerable when they start doing that. Uh, you know, he'll he'll crush a mistake pitch, but if you just bury him in that one spot, he he really looks awful. And I have to remember though, he's twenty. Oh yeah! Oh, absolutely! He has, he has oh yeah! Filled out absolutely players, so I don't have a problem with him. Absolutely, yeah. And it, like I said, it, as much as we, I think last year set some high expectations for him, but he's still in the upper tier of shortstops when all said and done. So. Now moving to the place that was the quicksand for the <laughs> Sox, the Spinal Tap drummer is third, <laughs> third base. Uh, everyone from Sandoval played there. Actually, batted ninety nine times this year, and they put everybody. They put there. Rutledge there for a while. Oh. Uh, uh, Rarero played there. Rarero, yeah. But and finally, they decided to bring up this kid, rush him through the minor league. I mean, rush him. Uh, very big time uh, rush. He, he was <laughs> playing single A, then he played at Portland for about two weeks, two, I think. Didn't even open his toothpaste. <laughs> yeah. uh, if he <laughs> used, and then they put him for about nine days down in, in Pawtucket and rushed him up to play. This is Raphael Devers we're talking about. 20 years old. 20 years old. Yeah. What are you doing with 20? Uh, uh, not what he's doing. What he's doing. <laughs> I, think, I think I was working on this right here when I was 20. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and he started out with a miraculous study. He, he is the youngest guy ever to hit eight home runs with the Red Sox. Which is the quickest to do that. And I think, uh, isn't come playoff time, he'll be the youngest playoff starter? I think had, so. Because I think, cause Bo, it was Bogarts, I thought. Yeah. And he's younger than Bogarts. Was right. He's playing so he ended up actually not that bad. He no. had 10 homers, knocked in 30 runs, hit 284. And uh, he provided, as far as I'm concerned, the most memorable moment of the season. When he homered off for all this chat. All this chat. That was electrifying was, was when he like, did it that. It was like, man, what a moment. And if that you was. go on YouTube and you've seen the footage of the Yankee fan when he hit the home run out, I don't know if you've seen it, find it. It's hilarious. And, <laughs> and every single time. Chapman's pitching on the national broadcast. They refer. To they that. bring it up. They they refer to yeah, that. he hit a hundred and two mile an hour fastball out That's of right. the park to tie the game in the net. It, it was a classic home run. Yeah. Uh, I gave Devers a B plus, verging on incomplete because it's a very small sample size okay. that we've seen of him. Uh, I think for what he is and considering he's twenty, I think he did very well under the circumstances. Well, I was always a little tough grading teacher. I gave him <laughs> a B minus only because. His fielding was very suspect. His fielding's very... And yeah, I, yeah. I got the feeling that, you know, you can teach hitting, but it's hard to teach fielding. You either have ability to do that or not. Now, I know he's young. I know he's not used to playing major league hitters out of position himself. But that six days, six errors... That was brutal. That was, was very was brutal. awful. Huh? First base solution down the, down the line? Could you you be, never know. Could be. You never know. Uh, you don't know what to expect from him next year. It could be a flash... Or he could be a superstar. Yeah, yeah. We, hey, remember we've seen. Uh, we all remember the days of Rudy Pemberton, who came up and went nuts for a month and then <laughs> couldn't feel. So we've seen rookies come up and do this. This, this will be one of the interesting question marks for next right. year. I do, the number one. Do they have the confidence that he's going to be the everyday third baseman? And if so, is he going to come through? Now, if they do re-sign Nunez. He's always the stop. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Because Nunez is going to be in the lineup. It's not going to Somewhere. Be, not right. going to be somebody just to fill in like Holt was. No. He's going to start. Nunez will be third, second, DH. Some, some, he'll be somewhere, somewhere in the lineup because yeah. his bat's too good to keep out. So overall, I, I would give the general infield a B. I think so. T uh, yeah, it, it's very... As many flaws as there were, you look at some other teams and you say, geez, they were actually weren't that bad compared right. to some other right. teams. Right. <laughs> so let's go out to the outfield. Uh, this was, I think, our strength. Absolutely. Especially defensively. Absolutely. Uh, with the, uh, the three Bs yeah. out there. And, and it's funny that you mentioned defense because defense is always one of those things It's hard to put into stats right. what defense right. does. And a classic case of that is Jackie Bradley because he's a phenomenal center fielder. And I'm just going to bring this up to, for defense in general discussion. And he actually doesn't do as well in the quote, you know, uh, fielding stats that you see on the paper because he has Benintendi and Betts on each side of him and they actually take away from his stats right. because they're so good. 
When you get a center fielder who's compensating and has to cover all this ground, of course the center fielder is going to get these great fielding stats or whatever. He's not that kind of center fielder because he's, he's flanked by two really good guys. So it's really hard to put into stats what the defense is. You have to got to go by the old eyeball test, I think, as, yeah. as used to happen in the old days. And Fenway's a very difficult park to play. Now, some of the parks that have a nice symmetrical fence all the way around, much, much easier to handle. He has to be concerned about the angles of the wall mm -hmm. and, the, and the big triangle. And the huge, field. huge right field that you have to sort of compensate when you play that so. way. Sure. But some of the, and the jumps he gets on balls are amazing. Yeah. But, but so that's the defensive side of the okay, thing. So let, let's run through them. Yeah. Andrew Benintendi, Rookie Year, preseason Rookie of the Year, almost by consensus. I would say he's probably going to end up number two. He anyway. will. He will. No. Didn't get hurt. Yeah, uh, yes. A rookie that played all season long. Five hundred and seventy-three yes. at bats, twenty homers, twenty-six doubles, hit two seventy-one, stole twenty bases, yep. locked in ninety runs for a starting first a start uh, for a rookie. That's a terrific yep. year. I, yep. you, I, go, you go through the stats of rookies yep. of the year over the last thirty years. Take Freddie Lynn out, right? <laughs> and, but. He's had a, he had a terrific year. He did, yeah, especially, the, and a lot of the rookies of the year were flashes in the pan, too. Uh, Dave Nilsson, anyone? Uh, you know, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, uh, for a rookie, I get I, A-. minus. I think yeah. he he was everything you'd expect and more. Uh, he, and the thing is, uh, with a rookie, he, about the early June, he started to hit a slump. Yeah. And they put him on the bench for a couple of games. He didn't take that to heart. No. He worked at it. He took it in stride. And he came back, and he was right where he was before. Some rookies really might get down on themselves if you do that. Not him. He was strong the whole way after that. I like the 20 steals. He's not a speed merchant. No, he's not. He's, but he's smart he's about smart. when he steals. But he did have a few stumbles where he took the, uh, get caught a couple of times, that. but again, as a rookie, that's going to happen. That'll, and but then that was true of the team in general. he seemed to have a very even temperament. Mm -hmm. You never see him get down on himself or get angry, yes. throw his cap around. And even mm -hmm. in interviews, he was just, he's under control. Yep. And mm -hmm. uh, he's 22 years old. And the funny thing is, the Sox never had a 2020 guy until uh, Ellis Burks, which is kind of strange. But, uh, since then, Ellis Burks and Nomar did it. He was also a 2020 guy as a rookie. But it's pretty rare to come across that. That, well, I gave him a B plus. I was probably being a little little tight, but A's are only for the superstars. Oh, true. Okay, so, but but it's uh, and so much was expected of him, and he didn't crack him. Not at all. Not at all. And you know what? So he's not the rookie of the year. Big deal. Judge is the rookie of the year by a mile. Okay, I I can live with him being the number two rookie of yeah, the year. I'm right. I'm fine with that because right. nobody in history did and what Judge he, did this year. Sometimes go down through and check the rookies of the year, and probably half of them. That was their best year. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I, well, I remember well, Don Schwal. Don Schwal, <laughs> yes. And they, and, oh, yeah, great rookie year, and then he couldn't throw a strike after that rookie year, could he? Well, like I said, Dave Nilsson won it one year. There was some real phantom. Who was the Eric Hinsky won it one year? There were right, some real right, phantoms with right. one rookie of the year in the past. So uh, that, hopefully that'll happen to Judge, but I doubt it. We'll see. <laughs> uh, the other outfielder, I, we'll call him the left field, was Chris Young. And he, to me, was very disappointing for a couple of reasons. He didn't get to play much, for one thing, because the outfielders were pretty solid all the way through. True. And uh, I can't remember one key hit he got all No, so, well, they got him to hit lefties, this, and he actually had a reverse this year. He hit righties better. And also, on top of that, they had this stretch in April. Didn't they go, like, 20 games where they didn't face a lefty? Yeah. They, for some reason, it just seemed like they didn't face a lot of lefties this year, so he never really got in a group. Last year, he was consistently in the lineup, and he, and he was hitting well. He just never, and he was hurt this year, too, let's keep in mind. He was yeah. on the DL for a bit, too. Yeah. Uh, but he never quite got in a group. I gave him a C. Uh, I gave because, him a C minus. Because I, I, just don't, he, um, I just don't think he got the playing time. He had 235. Seven homers, two steals. And nothing memorable. Nothing no, memorable. No big clutch no. hit. Uh, I think a lot of that hitting, like he had a two-homer game against the White Sox. Yeah. I think he was kind of a bully hitter even and, in those And staff. he was put in a seventh inning a lot, just the rest guys. Right. You know. Know. Sure. So. And, and, and when he's not in a groove, where do you put him in the lineup? That's the issue, too. Right. So if he's covering for Bradley or Betts or Ben Benintendi, Okay, he doesn't get their spot in the lineup, so you have to shift everything around. He's a free agent. Do they bring him back? I don't think so. Six million? I, I don't think so, no. no. I, I don't think so. 
So okay, happy Jack, trails. Jackie Bradley is a center fielder who played pretty much all season. Not hurt. Uh, yeah, didn't get hurt, but he only hit two forty five, knocked in seven uh, seventeen homers, knocked in sixty three homers, uh, sixty RBIs. Stole eight bases, which I think is low. I, think I, I, low. I agree. I absolutely um, agree. I don't get it with this guy. When he <laughs> does hit home runs, he hits them to Ted Williams' seat. Yeah, he does. Uh, and, and he's a phenomenal outfielder, but they always bat him ninth. For s yeah. It's weird to have a 17 homer guy hitting ninth, so that, that, that should clue you in. And I don't think that Farrell likes him. He's not Farrell's guy for whatever reason. So it, it, I think he's always on the verge of getting taken out of the lineup for whatever okay, reason. Now, I get now, that impression. Now, riddle me this. How did he have a 29-game hitting streak at starting the All-Star game? I have no year? idea. What, what did I that come no, from? I have no idea. Did he, did he juice for six weeks? I have, and, and, and he's so darn streaky, too. He'll go three weeks where he just can't get out of his way, and then he'll carry you for a week, you know, crush three homers, and then he just goes right back to slumping. I mean, I, I, I gave him a, I gave him a C plus. Uh, because I just think that... Oh, did you know? It was good. I guess we're agreeing. Um, I think the defense makes up for a lot of that. Yeah. And you know what? If he can if he can hit a consistent 250 rather than streaky all over the place, I think they can live with that with the defense in center field and hitting him ninth. But, but unfortunately, this year's lineup was so bad, you have to rely on a guy like that to That's produce. Right. That's right. So. so we'll move over to the... I would say probably still the number one offensive player on the team. Mookie Betts playing in right field. Uh, his stats were he, he hit uh, 24 home runs, 46 doubles, 101 RBI, stole 26 bases. But his batting average was 264, down from 318. Be down from 318. 318. And I think if you look at the at that batting, everything else was right in line with last year, right. which was really so. I think you have to look at that somewhat as luck. I mean, if your homers and your ribbies and your steals and your doubles are all in line and your average is off, either you were really lucky last year or you were really unlucky this year. So I, 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 I would put a lot of stock in a 50. He did seem to go through drop. a stretch, though. He was trying to drive the ball to right. He did. He did. And again, maybe that was pressure because the lineup wasn't producing. Could he felt he had to do it himself. They hit him lead off for a while, then they yeah. hit him third, then they, they hit him hit fourth. fourth. And <laughs> no... Again, who are the better options? They didn't yeah. have any. That was the problem. So you want your best guy hitting third. And so by default, he's the number three. And they had a rookie hitting second or third all season. Sure. Long. That's a pretty unusual thing. It really is. Yeah. Judge accepted. Right. Of course. Well, Judge is a, is a pretty. And, but uh, I think he could win, very well win the gold glove this year. He's right terrific field. in right, right field. field. And, uh, and don't forget, he's a converted second baseman. He's only been doing right field for two or three years now, which is all the more impressive. And he has that huge right field to cover at Fenway. Didn't seem daunted by it at all. He was very confident out there. Now, some guys get timid out there when they when they see the wall and the weird angles like you're talking about. He still about. looks like he's having a good time. Oh, he's that's always smiling. Yeah, always smiling. Oh, yeah. That's a good sign. Even... If I mean, it's easy to be smiling when you're winning, but he yeah. just somehow, he seems to be, uh, but he's not a leader, especially. No, he's kind of uh, quiet, actually. Quiet guy. Yeah. And he should be bowling sometimes. Yeah, he should be bowling. But, <laughs> but I, I gave Mookie a B plus. I did too. I, I think I that uh, not not quite an A season like he had last year. Uh, if, you but, won, if you won the White Sox, it would be an A. Yeah, absolutely. No. Yep, absolutely. And, and so I think uh, going forward, I think those three outfielders are really, uh, that's sort of the strength of the team is those three outfielders. Okay, now how about all the rest of the bench? I just I decided to group them. Oh, yeah. I, we'll actually, Holt, I did, I did Marrero, too. Marrero, Sandoval. Rutledge, Lynn, Davis, and Travis. What would you give them as an overall? I would give them probably a C minus. <laughs> I, gave, I gave him a D plus. Uh, and, it's un, uh, and perhaps it's unfair to knock Holt because he was hurt a lot of the right. year, right. and it was a concussion injury, and you never know how people are going to come back from that. So maybe he's unfairly lumped in with that group. But uh, Marrero, he is what he is. He's a great fielder. He can't hit a lick. Yeah. So you have to live with him as a defensive replacement. And the other guys just didn't do anything to no. stand out. No, nothing. We didn't really have a bench. No, they not brought guys up from the minors in emergencies to fill in when someone was it, hurt. And they were just all sort of these fungible people that yeah. you, they were interchangeable and nobody really grabbed like the reins. That. Two years from now, you're going to even remember Lynn? Not at all. Who no, was, no. Did or, he play for our team? I, no. or, or, or for some reason, they were high on Rutledge and he got hurt and was never heard and from let's again. Let's getting Rajay Davis. I got him as a pinch runner, and he never pinch ran. And he, they, and they were 
ten in the top ten in steals. Like, they didn't really need speed. Maybe they were hoping they'd catch Lightning in a bottle. Well, like he last had twenty eight when he came to them. He stole one more than one rest more of the year. Yeah. They they started in two or three games. They couldn't hit. Yeah. Well. Maybe they did that thing. He'd always killed them in the past, so maybe they figure that he won't kill us if he's you on our team. I don't, I don't think so. No, I think that was just a rental. Yeah. Absolutely just a, a rental. rental. Yeah, but if you remember, when he was with Toronto especially, he killed the Red Sox. They like, hated to see him come up. So, so if we're going to talk about the offense. The two big holes were left by Travis Shaw. Yes. <laughs> one, of the, one of the sterling moves that yeah, Mr. Dombrowski made this year. That was not and, good. And Ortiz. But and between Indeed. them last year, they had 54 homers, 82 doubles, and had 285 hits. And that's exactly what they were down. Right. So, yeah, so, yeah, those are the two spots that they were yeah. missing. Yeah, and Travis Shaw goes on to the Brewers and has a... He's going to be in the MVP talk for, the, for the year because the Brewers had a great year. 31 homers, 100 RBI. And he admitted the last month or so of the year last year he was trying to pull everything and he corrected that. Yeah. So that's something a simple talk with Chili Davis might have corrected that. And God, they could have used him this year. Okay, so <laughs> overall, what would you give the offense total? Oh, over the actual lineup, I would give like... A, Probably a C plus. I think that they, uh, I think they were underachieving and uh, C plus. There we go. Uh, and it was really disturbing that they were last in homers. Yeah. You know, when you can't out homer a Red Sox team. Yeah. I don't think that's ever happened. No. I mean, if you can't out homer, out homer a team like you know the White Sox or the Tigers or Oakland, when you're behind those guys, that's a problem. Yeah. That really is a problem. So I mean. This year of the home runs, it's a, it's kind of strange because this was the year of the home runs. Six thousand something we hit, and the Red Sox and were last. last. <laughs> the Red Sox were last. <laughs> so yeah, it, it, again, it was really strange how it's been the years of the pitching ending until now. This was the year of the hitter, and they completely reversed it. Yeah. Right. So I don't know. Is that bold well for the future? We'll find out. Who knows? So let's talk about the pitching. The pitching. Yes. Last year, the reason they didn't go anywhere in the playoffs is because they had no pitching. So this year, they decided to go for pitching, and, uh, and uh, it came, came through. Hitting. The pitching the came pitching through. And they did come through. So let's start with something positive. Chris Sale. Chris Sale is... I, I gave Sale... Sale was the only A I gave. I know uh, he did wear down, uh, and I think part of that is... I hate to be, say it, part of that's on the manager. Uh, part of that is... You know, he had a lot of really long outings early in the year that I thought were unnecessary. I, you know, and uh, especially as a history of kind of breaking down the last month or so of the season. Uh, but overall, how can you complain about it? He's probably going to come in second in the Cy Young to Corey Kluber. Yeah. So it, it's hard to knock a guy for that. He was 17 and 8, 290 ERA, which was second in the league, and 308 strikeouts, which topped everybody. Which he's the only guy, the, since, the first guy since Pedro to have 300. I guess they, I gave him an A minus. Mm -hmm. uh, and. I'll take a little issue when you say the manager used them too much. Yeah. you got to win the games in April and May, too. That's true. And true. that bullpen, they didn't know how good that bullpen was going that, to be. Val, Val, and and if he wears down Val every point. year, maybe he should eat more hamburgers. Yeah, there you, there you go. <laughs> Have a hot dog. <laughs> uh, and he wears down. Uh, you can't fault a guy. And he still only pitched a little over 200 innings. My goodness, they used to pitch 280 200, innings. Yeah. That's no. true. He had 214 innings. Yeah, uh, that's... Uh, yeah, it, it, but he was at least one of the things that started the sale day. It was fun to come and watch it. It was, and any given draw. any given day, he could go strike out fifteen and, guys. And uh, he did have not much run support, especially at the beginning of the oh, season. Oh my lord! Oh, absolutely. He he <laughs> lost he lost one to nothing to the Phillies. Well, we went to, to see him pitch in the second game of the year, and the Red Sox won three to nothing in twelve innings. Twelve innings, right? So he didn't get the win. And right. He pitched the that happened several times. We gave up one or no runs. If they had forcelled him like they did last year, yeah, right, true. Right. Yeah, that's a 22-game winner right there if, uh, if they persell it. So, do we, have a, do we have a little bobblehead of him kicking around? Oh, yeah, we do. Actually, we uh, here is the Chris Sale bobblehead uh, with number 41, uh, one of the many Fenway giveaways that they had. So, uh, hopefully, uh, and, and I think uh, especially in relation to what they're paying him, they got a great contract right. from the White Sox right. when they acquired him. So I think there's some wiggle room, and I, and he's such a competitive guy that I think if they work it with him properly, they can sign him probably to something longer yeah, than Because he can right opt now. out after next year. He can, he but he's uh, it, he comes across as very competitive. It's always about the team winning. It's yeah. not about That's him. Right. And I... And right. 
you know, for all their warts, the Red Sox are one of the best teams in baseball. So you're going to take your chances and go somewhere else just on a big contract right. and not the, have a winning team. The trouble this year is there are two super teams. Yes. Houston yeah. and Cleveland are super teams. Yeah. And and it's not even close. They're just a whole league ahead of everybody else yeah. in the American League. Yeah. Baseball's got a, a problem with parity. Yes. Because they, they have do. some teams that are terrible. Uh, some divisions where only one team is over 500. Yeah, the the, yeah, the central was well, no, not not the uh, the west was like that. The yeah. Astros won their division, I think, by 22 games or something like that. It was absurd how much they won. The Dodgers were by 22 until they had a little slump. Right, you know? and, and and they were ahead of the wild card team, which is really scary. They won by 22 in Arizona was the wild card. So, so there's a real problem with parity, which isn't good for baseball. Well, and Washington was the same way. Washington won their division, I think, in mid August. I mean, they had about a you look how the NFL game. has addressed parity. Mm -hmm. They, they tweak the schedules every try, year try. to try to get the different teams in. And baseball does nothing about that. So I, I got a suggestion. Let's tweak the schedule next year so we don't play Cleveland or Houston at all. That sounds great. The Yankees only once. Right. Yeah, that sounds good. Fenway. Fenway. We could, yeah, at Fenway. That, we, can we load up on the White Sox next year or the Tigers <laughs> next year? That'd be really great. <laughs> okay, let's keep on going through the staff. We're limited for time. Oh, that's right. So uh, number let's two. go to Drew Pomerantz. Drew Pomerantz. 17 and 6, 332 ERA, fifth in the league, 174. Ks to me the biggest surprise in the season. I I, I hundred percent agree. A minus, a minus. Ver, verging on an A. Yep. Uh, I don't think you could have expected anything more than you got out of him this no. year. Uh, he had a little bit of a slow start, and, and about mid May he really hit his stride. And he was the most other than Sale, he was the second dependable guy they had. Right. You know, um, little the only if you're going to knock him a little bit, maybe he's a six inning guy. He yeah. runs up some high pitch counts, but overall I I, I can't complain about what he did. He was terrific. Right. I think. I think he was sixth in the league in earned run average when all was said and done. Uh, six, yeah, yeah. He, uh, so I, I have no complaints. And it came about down as the season went on. It did. So. Yes. Yeah. They said he had a kind of a rough patch in April, and then he really hit it, hit his groove. Uh, no complaints at all. About How about last year's Cy Young winner? <laughs> Twenty-two and four in 2016. Eleven and seventeen this year. Four sixty-five oh ERA. 181 ribbies. The only thing I can say about Porcello is he on ribbies. Strikeouts. <laughs> Strikeouts. Uh, the only thing I can say about him is he was not hurt. He took he every was, turn. He was dependable. He took uh, every turn. But I gave him a C. He was dependably yeah. bad. He was. <laughs> I gave him a C. Uh, and, I th and I think um, last year was a year, and not just him, sometimes pitchers in general have a year where everything goes right. And last year was one of those years for him. He it seems Fenway, right, right. And and he's a ground ball pitcher. Every grounder he threw found a glove. Uh, this year he gave up. Uh, a, I I don't think he was as bad as the numbers look. He gave up a lot of real flare hits and garbage hits. They didn't uh, a couple games they didn't feel well behind him. Um, and uh, if you look at the numbers. I think he's somewhere in between last year and this year. I, I really do. And if you look at the numbers from the Tigers, he wasn't that far off. I think he he is what he is. <laughs> well, he was nine and fifteen in two thousand fifteen. Right. And twenty two and four. And that was eleven and eleven and seventeen. Which is the you know <laughs> also levels out. So what do you expect from him next year? You don't. Who knows? Who knows? Somewhere in the middle, can, can you depend on him to be like a thirteen and thirteen? He doesn't guy? make sore arms. He always no. goes out there and, and pitches. And well. and, la and again, when the team is hitting, that's valuable. When the team isn't hitting, he's exposed. Okay. So, uh, and, you know, they, they didn't he lead the league in in runs uh, runs scored for him last year? Yes. Yep. So and this year he didn't get that. Well, there's the difference. But in any case, those are the three starters that pitched all the way through the year. Now, the fourth starter. I'm going to call him David Price at this point. He, and Price, I gave an incomplete. You can't, you can't give him a grade on what he no. did. He pitched for, what, a month and a half, maybe? And, and he had this mysterious soreness in his arm. Uh, he ended up 6 and 3, 338 with 76 Ks. Most of that based on a few key relief positions. Yep, he plays at the end of the season. Yeah, he did come in with relief at the uh, end. Who knows? You know, he's a former Cy Young pitcher that they paid, they paid $30 million a year. And when he comes back healthy, then he's fine. Sale and Pomerantz. That's a great one, two, three, but is he going to be healthy? Who knows? Well, that's that's a big question. It, in, and a bigger question mark than that is how much does he really like pitching here? 
I never got the impression that he was thrilled about coming to Boston. And no don't one, forget, no he has, one, Tampa Bay likes to come and play. No, I guess not. And he has an opt-out, let's not forget, after too. Year, yeah. He can opt-out after next year. Does he take that? Who knows? Can you depend on him for the Where rest of the contract? Where else is he going to get $30 million? I have no idea. But if he hates Boston that much, unless he, he comes leave? back and has a great season. He, he, might. he might. But I, just, I never got the impression he was thrilled with being here. Uh, so you can't really grade him this year. It's uh, There's too little to go okay. on. Now, now my... My most disliked player personally on the team, Erod. Erod. I, I just can't take this guy. Uh, he ended up six and seven, four nineteen, hundred, hundred fifty Ks. There's something about the way he pitches. It takes him forever. He looks miserable on the mound. Yeah, he, he doesn't show any emotion. He just, if he makes it through six innings, you know, you go to Lourdes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a big change because I thought actually. Last year when he was pitching well, he showed some confidence, and it seemed like yeah. that was gone this year. Maybe, again, that was due to injury. Who knows? Uh, but it just seemed like he was definitely a notch below last year, where I actually kind of, he sort of turned into a dependable guy by the end of last year. This year, there was nothing like that whatsoever. He took for, he rang up some pitch counts. How many times was he get 100 pitches in the fourth inning? And he was hurt again, hurt again. And he just, again. and he just didn't have the confidence. He would just nibble and hope something good happens, rather than just attacking guys. Uh, yeah, he was a big disappointment. But again, he's young. Who knows? He may figure it out. And there were glimpses this year. You know, he had a couple times where he went six shutout innings, and you're saying, where was that all year? And so maybe he'll figure it out. Now, I'm hoping they can package him. Dombrowski had a relationship with the Tigers. Package him with a couple other guys and try to get Mickey Cabrera. Oh, uh, that'd be nice. Like first base. That'd be nice, wouldn't it? Yeah, I'm sure. That's <laughs> I it. would take him in a, in a heartbeat. There's always Christmas. So. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that, absolutely. And the other one is Doug Fister. Yeah, who all of a sudden, uh, all of a sudden, may potentially be starting a playoff game, uh, which <laughs> seems rather odd. Uh, but I, you know what's funny? I gave him a B minus because he was unemployed to start the year. Right. I mean, talk about a while ago. Talk about coming out of nowhere and contributing, and he did contribute. He had about a five or six start stretch where he was unhittable. Yeah, but before that, he had five against six games where he was very unhittable. And then afterwards, and then he, 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 he was five yeah. and nine, right. 488 ERA. Uh, I gave him a C. Yeah, and, and I, I gave him a little higher only because he was a guy you ex he wasn't even on the radar. Who knew he was even going to be on the team, let alone contribute anything? So uh, I, I, I don't think they're going to bring him back. I think he was a rental. Sure. <laughs> and uh, if you're looking for him to be your number five starter, I think you have some issues in the rotation for next year. I, I think he's he's cooked. He's done. Yeah, I think I think the number five starter. We we haven't said his name. He's yeah. coming from another team. I think so, too. I think they're going to yeah. shore up that rotation Somehow. a little bit. So, overall, I think I'd give the rotation probably a B-, minus, uh, only because I think Sale and Pomeranz weigh that, bring that grade up, and the bottom three bring it down. I sort of split the difference between the five of them. I think I I might be a little higher because the yeah the pitching is what saved this team this year. It did. So I, I think I I think I give him a B overall. It did. It did save them. But that brings us to the part that really saved the That's team. Right. The bullpen. The bullpen. <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll take this a little quicker through the people. Uh, our definite, not tenth player award, first, second, third, fifth player award is Craig Kimmel. Craig Kimmel, absolute A across the board. Can't get any better than he did this year. He had a phenomenal season. There he is. Uh, there he is. <laughs> with, the, with the vulture arm the vulture out. Arm. He's <laughs> scary. They were talking about that during the playoffs. He's intimidating to look at this guy. Oh, yeah, he has this he big like beard. He's going to fly at you. <laughs> yeah, he does. <laughs> and what kills me about him is he's got pink cheeks. Yeah. And he's still a kid, this pink cheek yeah. guy. But, and he's, <laughs> but overall, you can't, he struck out half the batters that faced him this year. Never that, happened. That, that's never a, happened. That's astounding. 5-0, 144 ERA, 35 saves, and... There weren't many save opportunities. No, there weren't a lot. A lot of that was coming in just to give him some work. And uh, 126 K. That's ridiculous. Absolutely. <laughs> that's nuts. And I don't remember him blowing a big game all year. I think he only had two or three blown saves, and they were sort of minor in the scheme of things. That's right. Uh, absolute. I uh, trust him with the ninth inning. Uh, I think he's the the one player that's a solid A across the board this year. I gave him an A+. Plus. Yeah. I don't think I've done that since, uh, let me think, uh, probably Ortiz. Yeah, right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so, so, but, uh, and below Kimbrough is really odd because they didn't really have 
any superstar go-to right. guys. There right. are many teams where you look at it and it's like the Yankees. Okay, they have Chapman, they have Patanzas, they have Robertson, they have Green, they have Warren, they have all these. The Sox didn't really have that pecking order. That seventh and eighth inning, especially, was kind of fluid all year. Yet they put up fabulous numbers. Well, look, this is interesting. Kimbo is five and zero. Oh. Henry two and three. Barnes seven and three. Kelly four and one. Albad Abad two and one. Workman one and one, Scott two and one, Reed and Boy each one and one. That's twenty five to eleven. Yeah, out, out of the bullpen. You know why? Because they get all these extra inning games, they were able to hold the team down and finally get the They win. were 15-3 and three in extra inning games. Now think of all the shutout innings your bullpen has to pitch right. for you to have a 15-3. Right. And, th right. and they had a 19, they had a 16, they had, they had three or four really marathon, and they won them all. Uh, no, they lost one to the Yankees and they won the rest. I think they were 4-1 and one in 15-plus in innings. So, and uh, to put this in perspective, I know we're going to run down the, some of the individual guys, but I think the bottom guys of the bullpen were probably Abad and Hembry. Yeah. Now, their FIP, which is their pitch, fielding independent pitching, which sort of goes below ERA, takes out the fielding. Hembry was the worst at 392. The league average FIP for a reliever was 4.12. Right. Our worst guy was better than the average guy in another bullpen. Right. That's pretty astounding. I mean, it really is. This is. I gave them individual scores. I gave Hembry and Barnes B minuses, Kelly and B. Abad, Workman, Scott, uh, Reed C's, and Boyer a C minus. Because none of them stood out especially, but all of them had ERAs yeah. except for Boyer in the two or three. Yep, all told they but were. Uh, yeah, no one, like you said, there was no one. Oh boy, here comes here comes Robertson. Yeah, right. Here comes here comes Betances. Oh my God, they did yeah. the job. And I, if, if, I'm not, as you know, I'm not a Farrell fan. But I think he handled the bullpen pretty well. I think he did. And he needed to. He, oh, absolutely, yeah. he had to. I think there was a little bit. I think Henry and Barnes showed some overuse as the year went on. April and May, he went to them a lot, and I think that really showed. But then Kelly came out and get healthy, and he kind of covered that. And Kelly can go two or three innings at a That's time. Right. Let's not forget, he's not a one-inning setup guy. And, he uh, wanted to be a starter for a while. Right, he did. He did. And I think Addison Reed, he gave up a couple homers, but all in all, he was a, he was a solid eighth-inning guy for the time that they rented him. Uh, he's not going to be back, by the way. That was just a rental. Yeah. But uh, overall, it's pretty hard to complain about the bullpen. That That's really right. saved them. That's right. It uh, it, 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 and when you run it through the stats machine, uh, there are stats, the uh, WPA stat, which is, wins pro which is when the bullpen appears in a game, your probability of winning, yeah. was 10.63. They started doing that stat in 1974. It's the eighth best ever. Eighth best ever bullpen, right. which is pretty astounding when you think about that. And I'll <laughs> bet non Red Sox fans couldn't name three guys. Oh, well, yeah, they know Kimbrell. Kimbrell, maybe Kelly, and yeah, that's about maybe, it. Maybe. And that's about it. So it was a lot of phantom guys doing a lot of uh, yeoman like work out of the bullpen. It really was. Now, there's three other pitches that we can consider for next year. First of all, is Stephen Wright, yes. who was their half inning ace. I don't know what, what the story with him is. Uh, who knows? He, he had one start, and he was hurt the whole rest he of the year. He didn't have Tommy John, did he? No, he did no, not. Okay, he so did not. Who knows so, what he's going to uh, And you know what? If he pitches the way he did two years ago, welcome back. Sure. <laughs> they could really and use him. The two great purchases from Dembrowski, <laughs> Carson Smith, who did come back for a few innings at the end of this year. And, and looked okay. And but Thornburg. Oh, the, yeah, the, at all. the booty from the Travis Shaw so trade. Who knows what they, they, they come back to be what he thought they were going to be. Well, those are your seventh and eighth inning guys right, right there. So they come they back and out that part. So. Yeah, Smith looked good in the few innings that he came back. Some control issues, but that's expected when you're coming back he's from a year and a half. He, he is. is he is. So I think if the, if he's back healthy, that he's he'll be a good bridge guy. Guy to yeah. Kimbrel, uh, Thornburg. Who knows? I, we haven't seen a pitch, so there's not much to go on. Right. So, uh, but overall, for the entire team, like we said, it, it it's sort of odd. They had a 93 win season, which you think would be successful, but it's hard to give them anything higher than a B because it just felt like a flat year. Yeah. It, it really did. I was going to say I give them a B minus. Yeah, it, 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 with, with two or three. Glaring except rush, of course, but but it, it, it just it it didn't seem like it was a year when the fans got into it. It wasn't an, a particularly exciting team to watch. They did have comeback wins too, but yeah, they were right. but they just, there was never a real electricity around the park this year around the TV when you're watching it that there have been in years past. It's sort of an odd year. Yeah. Well, they didn't replace Poppy. 
in either statistically or leadership or, or, leadership, or draw or, or, or draw <laughs> yeah. or the kind of magnetism he brought to the team. And right. we're so used to having him around as being the spirit of Boston, the spirit of the Red Sox, right. that uh, missing him was, was... It was huge. You can't replace him. It was huge. So we'll yeah, on and off the field. Yeah. Uh, so we're running against the clock here. Uh, uh, so uh, we haven't done the trivia answer. The trivia if answer. Anybody picked up this if one, anybody got know. this one, you're really, you're really you, good you at that. You didn't Google it. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe you're in the ballpark and, and bully to you if you're even close to it. Since 1901, since the franchise started existing, the Red Sox have made the postseason 24 times. And that's, uh, that's counting from the days when you had to go right into the World Series all the way up to the wild card of, of right now. So 24 times. Yes, they've won the World Series eight times. Now, 24 sounds like a lot of numbers, but they have been in the league for 117 years. Yeah, right. And it's out to about 20%. So it's yeah, 80% that's of the not time, even, yeah. they were also ran. Well, don't forget, I think from 18 to 67, they had a 50-year stretcher, and they made it once. Right. So they're kind of making up for that. I remember those years. <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> Yes, you do. <laughs> and then they went 67, you know, there was a 10-year gap to 75, then 10 years to 86. So, uh, and flat year or not, this is the first time ever they've been in, they've won the league title, the division title, twice in, in a row. Twice in a row. And, and give them credit, the Yankees really turned the Jets on the last month and they held them yeah, off. They held them they off. Really, they, they won the division by two uh, games. I, I don't think that they're going to be... Rated for, they were picked as one of the like they and the Cubs were right. once picked to become the uh, World Series champs. Yeah, and uh, well, but uh, we'll see what the we'll future see. holds because that Yankees team I, is pretty I, good. I, I, do, <laughs> I do think they're going to make some moves. They got. Oh, do they will. The problem is they got a couple of guys that's still carrying on there. Oh, they're still carrying like Sandoval uh, and Castillo. That's thirty million bucks they pay guys that aren't even playing. And Alan Craig is ten million for next year, yeah. I think, too. So. And uh, yeah, but Castillo and Sandoval are two huge burdens they're going to have to carry the next two or three years. And uh, Pablo did hit a home run in his final at bat of the season. So good luck to him on his retirement. He won't be back. <laughs> so well, in any case, uh, we probably will have a, some wrap up show later on. Oh, we'll, we'll have a post mortem at the but, end of the year. This is signing playoffs. off for. Uh, episode 7, year wrap-up. I hope everyone enjoyed the season. We always watch them, and uh, they're champions, so we can have the flag to fly outside the park. Yeah, so, so thanks for tuning in, uh, uh, we'll and see you all and on. See you in the park. Again. So long, folks. Thank you for watching another outstanding program provided to you by Lunenburg Public Access. We're here to serve the community. Lunenburg Public Access is always looking for volunteers to help record town events, high school sports, and town meetings. Please consider helping us out today. To contact us, you can call 617-763-3018. Or email us at lunenbergaccess at gmail.com.